So our last contestant of the evening is Aaron White. So Aaron is an astronomer, science communicator, graduate student, and a terrible cook. Ever since escaping the frozen wastes of his home state of Michigan, his dream has been to convince a room full of strangers he actually knows what he's talking about. All right, thank you. There's a lot of you out there tonight. All right, so I want to talk with you about what makes the planet, but specifically I want to talk about the solar system because our solar system has a problem. And that problem's name is Pluto. <laughs> now, for anyone unfamiliar with this problem, Pluto was discovered in the early 1930s. And since that time, it has enjoyed its reign as the ninth planet out from the solar system. For over 70 years, Pluto was considered a planet. But there were some problems with Pluto. In the early 70s, there were some ideas that maybe Pluto was not alone in the solar system, that it was actually surrounded by tons of other objects in what we call the Kuiper Belt. Now, in the early 90s, we started to discover these Kuiper Belt objects, and Pluto's planethood was called into question. This culminated in 2006 when uh, the meeting of the International Astronomical Union gathered together and redefined the definition of a planet. And with that, they had to reclassify Pluto to become a dwarf planet. Now, as many of you know, maybe some of you are too young for this, this was a very unpopular move for many. <laughs> this drew the ire, the disdain, and the hate from many Pluto lovers and broke countless hearts. Thankfully for Pluto, that heartbreaking was not as big of a problem because its heart is made largely, its heart is there, its heart is made uh, largely of nitrogen ice, which it turns out is much harder to break. <laughs> now Pluto doesn't care. Now, it turns out Pluto doesn't really care if we call it a planet or not. Like I say, it is, most, it is composed entirely of indifferent rocks and ices. But something we should consider is ourselves, because even though we can't hurt Pluto's feelings, we can hurt our own feelings. And in fact, I would like to suggest, I would like to hypothesize to you that by redefining Pluto as a dwarf planet, we have actually decreased our own human happiness as a result. Now, for many of you, this is obvious, but we can actually see signs of this in the data. Oh, God. <laughs> now, the IAU's decision, that is the International Astronomical Union's decision, has far-reaching consequences, much further than just the definition of a planet. This goes a lot further than just deciding what is and isn't a planet. This has affected us as humans, as our civilization overall. And because of that, I think it is a moral imperative that we redefine planet to include Pluto back again into this group of planets and to help sort of dissuade this wave of depression and sadness that has been sweeping over us. <laughs> Now again, if this wasn't apparently obvious to you, we can actually see this in data going all the way back to Pluto's original discovery. Now, it's kind of hard to find data about happiness over time, because this is truly what's happening here, is our happiness is being decreased. But we can look at marriage rates over time. And most people agree, there may be some disagreement, that marriage is the happiest time of our lives. And so you can see here, there's a direct correlation. In the 1940s, when Pluto started to become popular and well-known, marriage rates and happiness rates spike. But in the 1970s, when Pluto's planethood came into question, you can see an immediate decline. All the way to 2006, with Pluto's demotion, as it re-entered the news, there was a small bump, but then finally the death needle came, and our happiness dropped to the lowest levels ever. Now, we can see scars of other signs of Pluto's demotion in many other fields as well. For example, the novelty plate manufacturers have, some under, uh, have suffered a tremendous loss 
As a full one-ninth of their stock, 11% of their manufactured stock became unsellable overnight. <laughs> the commemorative stamp industry may never recover from this change. And even the entertainment industry, an industry normally known for being stalwart at the worst straits in culture, has been affected as well. When the Avengers team up next summer to fight Thanos, do you think they're going to invite a dwarf planet to help them? <laughs> Crossover hopes are dashed entirely. There's not a chance. Now, there are some detractors to this hypothesis. There are some people that would argue that if we're going to count Pluto as a dwarf planet, or we're going to count Pluto as a full-fledged planet, then we may as well count everything in the Kuiper Belt as well, those tens of thousands of other objects out there that are just like Pluto. They would say that there's nothing special about Pluto at all. It is just one of many of these objects. And I absolutely agree. <laughs> Pluto itself isn't that significant. It's Pluto's status as a planet. So I think, I hypothesize that if we added more planets to the solar system, that happiness would not only stabilize, but it would increase exponentially. <laughs> Imagine millions of planets in the solar system, countless worlds, our happiness would grow by leaps and bounds. And if anyone knows where this gif comes from, you win a billion bonus points. <laughs> ah, yes, good. All right, so. The hypothesis here that I'm about to present to you is that if we introduce all these other objects, the asteroids, the Kuiper belts, the moons of our solar system, and call them planets, our happiness will rise to levels never before imagined. <laughs> now, this is clearly a strong hypothesis, but there are some signs that this isn't everything. There may be some things that we're missing. For example, earlier this year, there was the announcement of the TRAPPIST-1 system. This is a set of planets going around the star, TRAPPIST-1. Seven new planets were discovered. At least three of those are what we call Earth-like planets. And you would expect from our groundbreaking hypothesis here that this would mean an immediate increase in happiness overall. But if you look at the data, that's not necessarily true. <laughs> Now, careful study of this data suggests when that announcement was made in early 2017, happiness may have actually decreased. If you look to the far right of the slide, there may be confounding factors here. <laughs> but we're going to ignore those for now. So my team has been trying to model this, really exploring the parameter space to try and figure out what other factors could be involved here. Clearly, as we've discussed, planets are involved, as well, of course, as happiness. But we think with this TRAPPIST-1 system, something else here is happening. And we have modeled out and we have predicted that that other deterrent, that other factor here is actually self-importance. Now this isn't clear to you why. Imagine now, TRAPPIST-1 has three other Earth-like planets. There is a star system out there that has more Earth-like places than Earth. That seems inconceivable. That makes us come to terms with the realization that Earth probably isn't that special. We aren't that unique and we are not that notable. This region right here corresponds to that. For a large number of planets and low self-importance, you see a tremendous dip in happiness. Now, we expect this is because of the overwhelming feeling, that sense that our daily lives, our struggles on a cosmic scale are utterly pointless. And we've dubbed this... <laughs> the Valley of Existential Despair. Now, when these feelings of dread overtake you, when these feelings of just pointless existence start to overwhelm your mind, the solution, we think, is obvious. <laughs> when you're feeling your lowest, there's nothing like shoving your face in as many tacos as $8 can afford. <laughs> and it immediately bolsters that self-confidence and brings your happiness right back. So our plan now is to redefine not only what a planet is, but also to redefine what an Earth-like planet is. That is to say, any world capable of sustaining a Taco Bell. <laughs> that would be an Earth-like planet. Now, not, not only would this bring back our self-confidence here, but it would also drive us towards the future. We envision with this redefinition that Taco Bell will bring us into a new era of space travel. We can look to a future where Taco Bell branded Dyson spheres are harnessing the power of the stars themselves, feeling us and the universe with their energy and an equal measure of fire sauce. 
Now, not only is this going to change the future for us, but it will change the way we interact with our food developers, very much like movies you may have seen in the past. But even if this future doesn't come to hold uh, entirely as we predict it, there should at least be crossover potential for deals like this. Question from Katie. Uh, so th this is more of a comment than a question. Um, <laughs> so so, so there, you, you mentioned that, um, that there could be this problem of the self-importance problem if we, there are too many Earth-like planets. Um, I worry that this may also be a problem if you just redefine everything in the solar system as a planet, that our self-importance may go down. And so th there, there are two alternatives I, I, I thought I'd uh, get your feedback on. Uh, one would be to um, make Pluto a planet just by colliding a lot of other things into it and making it bigger, <laughs> and therefore if it's bigger, it could, it could meet the IAU uh, criteria. Could, um, could I suggest colliding Taco Bells with it? <laughs> that, sure, sure. I was thinking dwarf planets, but that'll work. Um, the, other, the other possibility is to take one of the other planets that nobody cares about, like Neptune, rename that one Pluto, and then, and then just switch it, and then it's fine. <laughs> I think there's a lot of potential. We should talk about this after the discussion. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, then Kerr. So you've drawn this very strong link between objects in the Kuiper belt and the amount of marriages in, in the world. Um, we're about 50% saturated now with one object, and you're proposing to introduce 10,000. How are you going to address the logistical difficulties of being married to hundreds or thousands of people? <laughs> We have considered this cultural shift to be an issue. We suspect that dowries of Taco Bell may help to solve it. <laughs> Final question from Carl. Um, in the past few days, uh, researchers have discovered what appears to be an asteroid that came from outside of the solar system and is going around the sun. Um, this is a very new novel discovery, um, and it, they have decided to call it an exoroid. So I'm asking you, what, <laughs> what is your prediction? Google it, exoroid. <laughs> so my question, what is your prediction about the happiness of our species now that astronomers have invented the worst name ever? <laughs> We haven't yet modeled that. 